I spoke to sisters committee and um, they said that let's arrange a Friday family night program. I said, okay, which topic you want me to speak? And they gave me a list of topic and the most selected topic uh, within sisters is culture versus religion. Brothers, do you know any reason why sisters selected this topic? Okay. So before I, uh, why the sisters are coming, inshallah, please sisters. Uh, um, in the meanwhile, Culture versus religion. What comes in your mind? What I'll be speaking? Tell me. Culture versus religion. What I'll be speaking in this topic? Come on, I won't bite you if you'll say wrong. Yeah? Problems happen between brothers and sisters from different cultures, maybe. Okay, that's a good way of taking. What else? Any idea? Mashallah. So culture, giving more importance to culture than religion. But are we talking about Western culture or Eastern culture? Both. And that is very important. Just like American politics is divided by between liberal and conservatives, our Muslim community is also divided within their own flavor, liberals and conservatives. As soon as conservative Muslim are going to hear this topic, culture versus religion, Imam of the Masjid is speaking on Friday night halaqa, they must be thinking Imam will give a reminder about not to integrate in liberal Islam, in Amriki culture, right? That's what they will think. And as soon as liberal Muslim will hear this topic, lib culture versus Islam, on Friday night, Imam must be speaking on, oh, don't be a Pakistani Muslim, don't be an Egyptian Muslim, be an American Muslim, right? So there is different take because unfortunately, we see Islam from a political angle. We don't see politics from an Islamic angle. And that's one of the biggest mistakes. Well, it's a very heavy statement. Think about it. We see Islam from our own social, political bias, not the other way around. And that's why we have so much issues in our community. Um, but it's a different topic, so let's start. It's a very sensitive discussion, very sensitive discussion, culture versus religion for primarily two reasons we as a minority let's let's start with three reasons why this is extremely sensitive topic first large number of muslims are immigrant in america yes or no and we are not only minority but it's with no exaggeration we are one of the hated minorities do you agree on top of that we have defeatist mentality or aka slave mentality about our religion being blended or should blend quickly to the mainstream religion and when you have this you have two different reactions when you are minority hated minority some of us have defeatist mentality you have two different reactions about culture versus religion one is once we come here from our muslim majority country we have this mindset that if we don't integrate into the American culture, no one will respect us. So we should quickly integrate, blend into the American culture in order to earn and gain respect. That is one of the um, perspectives which you will see in Muslim community. Oh no, go, go and we have to have a say in politics and media and everything. There are pros and cons of both the sides, but I'm just telling you there is one perspective. But then the question comes that the moment you are blending so quickly into the mainstream community, which is pretty godless, within next one or two generation, if you didn't put any proper guardrails, you will get lost, just like many other minorities. I was, I, I'm from Massachusetts. So the first janaza as an imam, which I led in Massachusetts, we went to cemetery. And there is an entire section in that cemetery, Worcester, Massachusetts. The cemetery is Hope Cemetery. There is an entire section for Muslims. And when I went to the grave, the grave was Muhammad Ali, 1865. 
then Zainul Abidin, 1879. And the first masjid in Massachusetts, if you take a stretch, it's in 70s or 80s. Then I actually got a chance to meet people in Worcester, Massachusetts. They said that there were migration from the demise or the decline of the Ottoman Empire as soon as they felt that empire was going to be declining. But there is no name of those Muslims. They blended so quickly, so quickly. You know, vast majority of Muslims don't even pray in America. So it's very important that we don't blend very quickly without proper guardrails. You know, we usually say to our kids and ourselves and our masajid, no, no, we need to, we need to engage with the society. Yes, but what will be the proper guardrails? Because we have seen the blunders of people who engage properly in a society without proper guardrails. Then there is another extreme. Other extreme is that Muslims will come here in America and they would say, either because of the blunder or because of different approach, they would say, we are not mixing at all. We are keeping our culture. So wherever we are coming, we have to keep that culture. That culture will going to protect, preserve us like Ashab al-Kahf. People of the Kahf went into the cave. So they protect, they def basically protected their religion. If I have to ask you which strategy is better, what you will think? There's no third strategy. For Muslims, either you will fall in this or that. What do you think? They both have pros and cons. They both have pros and cons. We Muslims, we were never tested like this because or we never had the loss of Khilafah in our 1300 year history. And then after Khilafah ended, now we are in a worse situation where we're um, intellectually, imperialism, colonialism, all these things um, are impacting us. And we are as a minority here. So what we should do, should we blend quickly? Should we put proper guardrails and blend? Or should we just stay away and within our own community and stay away from blending? But then the question comes that how, how far you can go with that? Eventually that flood will go and enter through the windows of your house. So this is, that's why it's an important topic, culture versus religion, where you'll draw the line. Second reason why this topic, so this is the first reason, okay? Second reason why this topic is extremely sensitive, and I just want to be blunt. How many of you are registered in my AMAL program? If you raise your hand, okay, few of you, okay. I will be teaching this in the fourth semester. There is a subject called Al Qawaid Al Fiqhiyah. Al Qawaid Al Fiqhiyah, legal maxims. Out of 2000 maxims, you know what is maxim? In American law, there is a principle called you are proven innocent until you're guilty, right? This is maxim in American law. This is actually basically Islamic qawaid al fiqhiyah coming back 1400 years. There are five maxims in Islam, five principles in Islam, which is agreed upon by all these scholars. And one of those maxims actually deals with culture versus religion. So we'll go in discussion in detail in our program, but I'll just give you summary to tell you how difficult it is the culture versus religion discussion in America for Muslims. The maxim says, al ada muhakkama. This is agreed upon principle. The local culture, Sharia principle is the local culture, the local custom will become part of Sharia if that is not in a conflict with Sharia and if Sharia is quiet about that from the Quran and Sunnah. Local culture, local custom, and by the way, this is agreed upon. No Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, Hamli, all four Mazhab agree on this. Local culture, local custom will going to become part of the Sharia have to consider local culture as long as it doesn't conflict the values of the Sharia and Sharia is quiet about that. So there is no precedent by the Sharia. So for example, before I can connect this to the culture versus religion, Allah says, treat your spouse, treat your wife with in a reasonable way, ma'roof. Ma'roof means reasonable way. But ma'roof comes from uruf. Uruf means culture. What is reasonable in America? The scholars say in the tafsir of this ayah, Surah Nisa, number 19, what is reasonable in America will be different than reasonable in Pakistan and Somalia in Egypt, right? So scholars would say that if you have a wife from, let's say, Egypt, her expectation of being treated nicely will be different as compared to 
a wife from Turkey or a wife from America. So based on her local cultural expectation, you need to treat her kindly to fulfill this ayah, bil maruf. Now do you know, do you see one problem with this? Culture versus religion. So in some aspects, Sharia is asking us that we need to be acceptable of local culture. Right? And in the other aspects, Sharia came to demolish some of the evil, sinful practices of that local culture. Now, do you see this dichotomy that how much vigilant parents have to be when you're talking about culture versus religion? Because see, it's very easy to be liberal and conservative rhetoric. Oh, hijab and niqab is just the cultural thing. Okay. It means who are you? Fulan bin Fulan. <laughs> who are you? And then conservative will have their own rhetoric. But some parts of American culture, if it's in no conflict, Sharia might consider that. And you can come into our fiqh class. We can say in the issues of mahar, in the issue of compensation, Sharia will going to say go back to local custom. But in the other aspects, Sharia cannot completely, cannot reconcile the local custom. That is homosexuality, let's say for example. Or zina, even if it becomes rampant, it will be haram. Is it clear? So that's why it's more sensitive, this topic, culture versus religion. What parts you were going to consider as a part of Islamic law, and then what part you were going to not only deny, but even try to change the local custom. So that's why it's also extremely difficult. And then there's third reason why culture versus religion is also a very difficult topic to discuss. Everyone thinks that they are moderate, right? Is there any extremists here? Okay, no one is extremist, man. Right? Yeah, I know you are. We have heard Dak and Nagi's speech. We all should be extremists, right? Um, no, everyone thinks that they are mu'tadil, they are moderate, right? Even the radical feminist and the toxic masculinist, if you ask them, they would say, we are moderate, yes? So now who is going to decide what is moderate? Because obviously we have removed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the West. So uh, divine definitions are not coming. So unfortunately, when you see liberals, Muslim community, I'm talking about liberal Muslims. If they are talking about culture versus religion, their approach will be leave Islamic value from Amer for American culture. Let's adapt American culture and anything comes from traditional value, leave it. That will be their style. It's too traditional. It's too orthodox. Remember, liberalism is all about hating tradition and conservative Muslims will have entire reaction like responding to one extreme from the other extreme whatever things can be taken they would say no 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 don't take it because must be coming from Amriki background so this is another dichotomy how you will going to take culture versus religion without putting Sharia in the picture if you are listening to random uncle or auntie in White House, wearing hijab and saying homosexuality is actually okay in Islam because she's wearing hijab. Should we follow her? Absolutely not. So now we need to understand this. Um, obviously, um, for more discussion and more detail, I would say for from the fiqhi perspective, you have to come in our legal maxim and qawad al fiqhiya class because it's a four hour discussion al qawaid al fiqhiya and this particular maxim culture versus religion um, but what, what i will do inshallah i'll try to give you a few examples how it can impact muslim community and what we can do to make sure we have a proper line between culture versus religion that we are giving preference to islam and whatever we can take from culture and whatever we have to deny the cultural values and then we can open it up for q a inshallah ta'ala Okay, so when we are living in America right now, what are the cultural values which can impact our Islamic understanding? Tell me. What are the American cultural values which can impact our Islamic understanding? Tell me. Whether social or political, yes. Bad dressing, mashallah, mashallah. He's my son, Sheikh Iban, mashallah. Where you have seen bad dressing? No worries. Your Abba wear dress, mashallah, nicely, right? Alhamdulillah. I'll give you a candy hibban, inshallah. Bad dressing. Can you, if I have to use, let's say, okay, let's, let's start with this 
bad dressing. Okay, bad dressing, obviously, it's a very nice example, but let's make it a little worse. Okay, zina. I'm not translating this. Zina. Adults understand the word, right? Zina. If you are a true liberal, true liberal, leftist, coming from a blue state, and if you are reading the Quran as a Muslim, and Quran says, Wala taqrabu zina. Do not go close to zina. Zina is haram. If you are a true liberal, then you will be uncomfortable with this ayah. Why? Liberalism believe in choice and freedom. Right? They would say, why Quran is putting restriction on personal choices? Right? Okay, rape is haram because rape is really bad. It's without consent. It's coming against our liberal paradigm. But why zina? It's why Quran is putting restriction on choices, on freedom. If two people are doing something with consent in private, let them do. If you are a true liberal, raised in the liberal environment, went into the liberal colleges, and if you don't have an Islamic worldview, then you will be really uncomfortable with some of the ayat and ahadith. And a slave mentality, a defeatist mentality, what they will do, instead of changing their worldview, that why I am getting uncomfortable with this ayah or this hadith, they will actually get confused and skeptical about that ayah and hadith because of that worldview. Instead of changing their worldview, that there's something wrong with the indoctrination of the society I have, I should change that. Allah the all-wise is speaking only truth. I would be uncomfortable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of that indoctrination. This is what culture can do if we see religion from the cultural lens and not the other way around. And same example I will give for conservative, but in a different perspective. Is that clear? How culture can impact your religious understandings? Maybe in, in Saudi or in Yemen or in any other conservative country, Afghanistan or Pakistan, they have their own issues. But I think everyone agree, vast majority of them, that zina is haram. They won't be uncomfortable because that's not the culture there. Okay, let me give you another example. So that people won't label me that I'm giving more examples of liberal. Let's take the example of conservatives. Because um, I told you this before, conservatives do not think that they are our friends. That's a mistake, subhanAllah, we were going to be kicked like a football. <laughs> Um, we we have by the way this will take us into a different debate but anyway um, let's start abortion in American politics abortion in American politics what do you think Mashaikh is it okay to abort a fetus or not tell me you know conservative versus liberal right okay what do you think Shuyukh Mufti what do you think tell me yes or no okay if you are just coming from Muslim majority country and you have heard that in TV people, liberals are saying it's my body, my choice, conservatives are saying no, no, you should never abort the fetus. And if you know a little bit about fiqh, you will see this from the fiqhi perspective. And that's partially true but partially incorrect also. There is a philosophical reasoning also. You have to see everything from that also, that perspective. It's not only about abortion that we were going to say, okay, in Islam, by default, aborting a fetus is haram, but some scholars allow in first few days, if there is a medical necessity, we know that we have heard this, right? Except Imam Malik and uh, Imam Ibn Hazm, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. But that entire debate is irrelevant here. You know why? Because in, in this context, in Western context, when they are discussing between the abortion, permissible or prohibited, they are discussing most of the pregnancies happening in teenage or sometime preteen, forget about the marriage. That's outside of Islamic paradigm. So pregnancy caused by zina, and you are using Islamic fiqh to find concession for them? This is what can happen when you are trying to copy paste fatawa without having the proper cultural value. So having Islamic knowledge is extremely important, otherwise you will give, you will going to do the same thing what I gave the example of Allah Taqarabu Zina, 
or and having the cultural knowledge is also extremely important otherwise you will end up in a disaster and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us ameen ya rab subhanallah um, i could have um, given more examples but let's let's move to the solution because solution is where the key lies we can talk a lot about problems but let's let's focus on solution i don't have solution for all this but whatever i gathered inshallah i will share that and whatever ideas you have because i can see many experienced brothers and sisters are here so just be honest inshallah just um, say it after i'll be done with the uh, three four five points whatever i have for solution inshallah i hope i'm not getting too technical so first thing first thing we need to do first solution is that as a muslim living in america we should never we should never respond to one extreme from the other extreme remember this we should never respond to one jahiliya with other jahiliya this is extremely important brothers and sisters if you are fed up if you are fed up from liberalism then solution is never to sit in the laps of conservatism i know there is a trend people are growing towards now conservatism if you are fed up let's say from radical feminism then solution is not toxic masculinity i know now there is a trend 10 years ago everyone is speaking about women rights women rights women rights every khatib is speaking about women rights women rights. and now we are speaking about masculinity right and because we are moving from a philosophical way from one extreme to the other extreme and this is our problem we don't give importance to divine guidance of quran and sunnah we just swing like pendulum swing like pendulum what we need to do we need to understand our islamic value ethical system in the current discourse islam actually islamic gender roles are balance which doesn't agree with either radical feminism or toxic masculinity but when we were going to see islam from one angle then eventually you will get comfortable with some teachings of quran and you will get uncomfortable with other teachings of quran so change your complete cultural baggage many times you will going to label the immigrants oh you are fob and you have so much baggage you know what subhanallah the amount of baggage which we have here means second third fourth generation muslims is humongous <laughs> we need to un unlearn so many things before we can learn anything so point number one in the topic of culture versus religion never respond to one extreme from the other extreme this is a problem you know recently a uh, statistics came it's very shocking subhanallah mainstream american in their high school 12th graders public school the guys are becoming conservative and the girls are leftist and by these statistics within five years girls will also become conservatives this is a problem that we are swinging like pendulum this because this entire civilization is godless so there is no way it can have moderation but who have expected to have moderation it's people of belief so that's my first request that do not respond to one extreme from the other extreme it actually have a trickle down effect in our communities also so that's why uh, i'm not giving you any particular specific example you not even using conservative language just using general language because i cannot use specific examples do not respond to one extreme from the other extreme um second second thing we can do and i will be a little blunt please forgive me um for my bluntness we have to differentiate between american secular liberal culture versus which are changing all the time versus islamic primary values which are constant and not variable at all we should differentiate between what american secular liberal culture which is changing every single year versus islam which is constant yes some secondary teaching will change of islam we'll talk about that in fifth class primary rules will be same so 20 years ago i remember uh 20 no 2008 so it was around 16 years ago that there was no question about women sitting here men sitting here and there is no divider most of the masajid 
most of the massages. There is no discussion. Even sitting like this was not possible in most of the masajid. Right? Then a period came where divider came, sisters here. I'm talking about cultural perspective. I'm not bringing religion because I have a book on men, women interaction. I can teach for that four hours. That's a different topic. Then this came divider, sisters here, brothers here. Then eventually, slowly, divider was removed. Sisters here, brothers here. Then slowly, what happened? You can sit together, families can sit together. And then, oh, you don't judge me, whatever I'm doing. Right? Okay. You are, if you are not considering religion, because religion is not a straight line, religion is a circle. So there are multiple opinions of a scholar. I wrote a book on this topic, I know exactly. The people who would say remove the divider, sisters will sit here, brothers will sit here. I know exactly that they have a fiqhi evidence. There's no fiqhi evidence for, by the way, intermixing that men or women sitting together right next to each other. But I know, but where you will draw the line? Because if we are, our standard is to change Islamic fiqhi position based on the liberal values, then their goalpost is changing every year. 10 years back, no, not 10 years back, 8 years back, I wrote the book on men, women interaction. That, books, that book looks irrelevant at this point. Because no one is asking about, can, can a man and a woman be friends? Now people are asking, can a man be a woman? Now think about it. How, and you were going to change Islamic fiqhi positions to make haram halal for this culture who, which is changing every year, you will be consistent. Because people don't need woke Islam. People don't need neo-Marxist Islam. People need Islam, organic Islam. How much we will do this? So we have to draw a line. Okay, these are the two, three opinions within this. These are the opinions coming from the mainstream. Which opinion is better in terms of the evidence and in terms of our not bringing hardship to our community? But if you have that egalitarian approach instead of complementarian approach, then you will have issues because you're coming from different perspective and you'll try to change Islam instead of changing yourself. So that's a second thing. Third solution which I have, and this is again very difficult to digest, I know, um, but I don't have any option, I have to teach you. Um, be, we are living in a pluralistic culture. That does not mean that we should be perennialistic. You know what does it mean? You know what does it mean? Okay. Pluralist people are living with the different diversity, different belief system. Even in Khilafah, we never had shirk-free Khilafah. So there were Mushrik and there were Jews and Christians living in Muslim Khilafah. The time of Khilafah Rashidin, remember? Peacefully. They were living peacefully. But we never had perennialistic challenge. Perennialism in a simple language means there is no objective truth. Everyone is going to Jannah. So if you see Nuh Ali Salam's son drowned and he asked Nuh, uh, Ya Bunai Irqab Ma'ana. When he drowned, you are supposed to say R.I.P. because you cannot judge him that he will go in hell. Firan, you cannot judge him that he will go in hell. You are too judgmental. That's perennialism. Perennialism. What it does, it just removes the entire Islamic discourse on reward and punishment. Because it equalizes, it neutralizes everything. Obviously, there are many factors for this. But when we are living in a highly perennialistic culture, media, Netflix, Hollywood, Bollywood, all of us are teaching us perennialism, perennialism, there is no bad, everything is good. Then where you will take the ayat of Allah where Allah speaks about haq and batil. Everything is haq now. Can you read a Quran, two, three pages of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't bring wabi haqqi anzalnahu wabi haqqi nazal. Allah will bring every now and then the ayat that this is haq, this is haq, this is truth, this is batil, this is falsehood. You'll remove everything. You'll say everything is equal. And this is the culture we are living because they have removed God 400 years ago. So they were going to, it's not unexpected from them. This is extremely important, extremely important. Because when we are teaching perennialism to our kids, you know what our kids will do? Our kids might realize that if that porn star is also going in Jannah, 
if that person is also going in Jannah, evil person, and if we are Muslims going in Jannah, then why need to abide by this hijab and this discipline and this difficult lifestyle? Might as well enjoy both the places. Because Islam looks very restrictive religion. If you remove Akhirah. Right? Why our sisters need to wear hijab in this hot weather? If you remove Akhirah. Think about it. And as a parents, as a parents, we are constantly out of either our ignorance or ar arrogance or both, we are teaching perennialistic ideas to our kids. This is extremely dangerous. Just caution here, it does not mean that we should be disrespectful. If a person is saying 2 plus 2 is 5, we should say this is wrong, but it does not mean that I should harm you. Right? I cannot agree with 2 plus 2 is 5, but okay, I think 2 plus 2 is 4, I believe that, but I won't harm you for that. But I definitely want you to get convinced that 2 plus 2 is 4 because you might get a loss in the community. So there have to be fine balance of peaceful coexistence doesn't mean that you are not firm on your values. Remember this. Fourth, and this is the difficult to understand, fourth solution. Uh, let's say this is a square. Let's assume this is a square. Although this is not ideally square, but this is a square. Can I, and if this is rectangle, can I put this rectangle in this square puzzle? No, right? I cannot fix rectangle into a square. Like the example is fixing a square pegs in circle hole, right? I cannot do this. Why? Because this rectangle is made differently. It cannot go into the square thing. Until I break and make it the square, then it will go. Agree? Even two-year-old toddler know this. When you try to enforce Islam into the liberal culture, the only way it can be compatible in some aspects is when you will change Islam. So now you need to ask yourself, yes, secondary values of Islam, scholars say that that changes by the time, like the dress, style, it's okay, as long as you are fulfilling the proper criteria about the haya and everything, about the aura, if you are wearing top or shalwar, kurta or suit, whatever, as long as it covers the basic criteria, it's fine. Those are the secondary things. But the primary thing about zina, about this, about that, they should not be changed. Most of people who blend into the mainstream Western communities and they lost their religion, they start with fixing square pegs and circle hole. They will start for, okay, let's change, let's change this, let's, let's do this, let's do this. Eventually, slowly and gradually, you will see that next generation, and then that next generation, second, third generation, will be lost. Allah understand. So this is extremely important. What is the solution of this? That we should, we should not do a square, we should not fix a square pegs and circle hole. Let's say, if my daughter comes to me, or to my wife, she's here by the way, Fatima. Uh, if my daughter comes to me and says, um, why I need to wear hijab to my wife? Alhamdulillah, my wife wears hijab. But let's say, let's assume if she doesn't wear hijab. Because that's a reality, some of our sisters don't wear hijab, right? Even though they should. May Allah SWT give us all the ability to practice Islam. I mean, Yaram. If my wife is not wearing hijab, then she should say that hijab is obligatory, but I'm weak. But what we usually say sometimes, no, no, it's just the optional thing. Yeah. It's, it's your body, your choice. And you know what you're doing? Whenever Fatima will grow old and she will read Surah Nur and Surah Ahzab and she will be exposed to real Islam that it's wajib, she will be confused. Should I follow real Islam according to my mummy or real Islam according to Allah? And real Islam according to Allah is too difficult. Made up by Malvis and Sheikhs. So let me follow the Islam of my mom. Or my dad. That's cool. Parents, I have repeatedly said this. It's easy to become parent. It's difficult to parent a child. If you don't know, stay quiet. Bring him to the scholar. Bring her to the scholars. People who know more than you. But don't give them wrong answers. 
because the moment they are exposed to right answers, they will be confused. May Allah SWT help all of us. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. And by the way, um, you know this defeatist mentality, this defeatist mentality, you know when it is exposed, is if just one example in every community, if you want to see how we Muslims will change the religion with our defeatist mentality, slave mentality, see the interfaith programs in the masajid. That's it. I, it is, just, yeah, so, yes, uh, if you can give me two, three minutes, I'm ending, inshallah. Then you can um, ask me, inshallah. Is it Sister Aisha? Okay, alhamdulillah. Um, Sister Aisha always, mashallah, asks me questions. And you always have difficult questions, which I don't know. So, I'm already saying, wallahu alam, Sister Aisha. Um, okay, so, let's say if I'm teaching my kids, Fatima and Hibban, gender interaction. By the way, nowadays, they are teaching me. Uh, but let's say, if I, I, by the way, just FYI, I have a YouTube recording for, I've taught my kids gender interaction for kids. Um, it is important if um, you want to teach to your kids also, I would suggest. It's five videos. But anyway, if I'm teaching them gender interaction, make sure you don't shake hands with the opposite gender, make sure you don't hug, make sure you don't give high fives. And, and then when I go to the work, when I go to the, these places, I actually casually do all the things, then my kids will going to realize that this is clearly double standard. I actually remember that when Fatima was six or seven years old, um, we were in Connecticut, uh, I was leaving Connecticut from Massachusetts, and um, uh, she had a friend called Tasneem, Tasneem. So I told her that we don't shake hands with the opposite gender at, at that age, six or seven. And Tasneem came to me and hugged me. And she's like, Abba? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Astaghfirullah. I should not have done it. <laughs> Kids are observing you. Kids are observing you. Well, like we think sometimes that one of the youth, I was giving a talk on one issue. And I was saying that real men, real masculinity is that you know what you want to say, when you want to say. You don't just speak the venom out. You are controlling, you are being patient, that's real manhood and masculinity in Islam. And then after that talk was over, one individual insulted me in question and in Q&A. So I said, Jazakumullah khairan, the other speaker will answer this. I'm not answering this question. That one young guy, he's not even my son, that young, young guy was noticing me. And the next day he came to me and he said, this is in one of the conventions. He noticed me and he says, Imam Asif, you said this in your speech and immediately I was noticing how you'll react when that individual was asking you and insulting you. Would you say without thinking? Because you just said five minutes ago, a real man should be patient. And I said, subhanAllah, how much these people are observing man. Kids are observing you. You need to be very careful. Um, so I would say practice, uh, inshallah. Uh, identify our priorities. Um, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all inshallah so that our kids um, lead the communities, inshallah, uh, integrate well in the society, but with proper guardrails. The problem is if you haven't set proper guardrails, and if you drop them in the ocean without teaching them swimming, then most likely they will be drowned until they find lifeboats. <laughs> um, so may Allah help us all, inshallah. So with this, inshallah, I will end.